Today on Twin Cam, you join me aboard my mum's 17-year-old Corsa C, because we're going down to Birmingham to have Melody's gearbox stripped down. I'm on my way to see Paul Jeffries, who is a bit of a A-series extraordinaire. He's built many engines and gearboxes for a load of people that I know, and um, he's quite well trusted, and so I've entrusted Melody's gearbox to him. So currently in the footwell, I have a very oily A-series gearbox, and I'm going to stand around, ask questions, and generally get in the way while Paul does his best to work around me and get the gearbox stripped down and diagnose exactly what's wrong with it. So I'll probably end up repeating myself um, during this video, but as it stands, we have a serious whine from the gearbox. We think it's differential, but we're not 100% sure. What we do know is that there is no second and first gear synchromesh. They are totally totally knackered it's very hard to get into i don't know why i'm looking in this car this isn't the car we're having it done to um, but it's very hard to get it into first gear it's generally not having a good time if you remember back to my video where we changed the oil on melody um, that was a long time ago um, then you'll remember how bad the oil in that car was uh, it just hadn't been changed very often i don't know what kind of oil was in it to be honest and um, I, I'm not surprised the gearbox is in the condition it's in, frankly. Um, it happens. So today is a day of reckoning where we see how badly damaged my wallet's going to be. So this is Paul, A-Series Master Mechanic. Um, yeah, this country is built by beardy blokes in sheds and Paul's one of them. <laughs> um, so today gearbox stripped down. So this video is only going to be about us stripping down the gearbox and diagnosing exactly what's wrong with it because we've kind of got an inkling it's a diff. We've already realised there's something else wrong with it um, as well but this is just diagnosis stripped down. In another video, don't know whether it'll be on my channel or Paul's channel, um, which I'll put a link to in the description by the way, we don't know where the rebuild will be but yeah it'll be coming so this is just diagnosis. So let us begin the strip down. I've never seen this done before, so for this narration, be assured I'm reading straight from the exploded diagram in Austin Rover's own workshop manual. We can learn something together. As we see it here, the side facing the lower right corner of your screen is the front side of the gearbox as it sits in the car. Again, as we see it, the left hand side is where the clutch goes, and the right hand side, where that half moon cutout is, is where the engine's crank pulley sits. On the back of the gearbox, where we can't see, is the differential housing. I know that technically the front of the engine is where cylinder number one is, but for ease of understanding, I'm going to refer to front and back as they sit in the car, with each end to be known as the clutch end and timing end. So no arguing in the comments. Speaking of arguing, that's what Paul's guessing you're all going to do over his use of power tools. Calm down. We're starting at the timing end and removing the engine mount on that side, which allows us to get at the speedometer drive housing, our equivalent of the gearbox end casing. That little nubbin Paul's just removed is the drive itself, then he can remove many thousands of bolts that hold it on. Shifting the gearbox round, we get our first view of the differential casing. Some people have asked, if the differential is at fault, why we're going to the trouble of all this. Well, there's a lot more wrong with this gearbox than just the diff. First and second gear synchromesh, for example, don't really exist, and it's just our hunch that the noise is from dodgy diff bearings. More bolts gone, and each side of the diff casing has a separate cover where the drive shafts locate. They're pulled off, and with a bit more strength, the whole final drive in its cover come off as one. Fortunately for my wallet, it seems there isn't an awful lot of play in the diff. We'll renew the bearings as a matter of course in the next video, but I'm very happy we won't be needing a whole new differential. So, back to the gearbox itself. That tube running down the centre is the oil pickup. Of course, these things share their engine and gearbox oil, so this is also the sump. The oil goes into the engine block through that large bore hole on the right and up into the oil pump.
Now we can get to the shafts themselves. This is where it all becomes witchcraft for me, so I'll try and explain it as best I can. The first thing we need to do is to lock the gearbox up, and we can do that by selecting two gears at once. The tube emanating from the back of the gearbox is the selector, and Paul's already rendered that useless, so he's gently knocking one gear into another. It's a bit hectic as I'm trying to record around Paul just getting on with it, but we've now engaged both fourth and first gears, and as you can see, there's no turn in that. The one we're beginning disassembly of first is the main shaft, and it's secured into the box by a nut and a lock washer. As you'd expect, it's pretty tight, so the big boys are coming out to play. And with the washer out, the pinion that drives the differential just falls out as well. All those raging 62 horsepowers go through that tiny gear. We'll now turn our attention to the clutch end of the main shaft, where we find the single remaining transfer gear. On the end of the engine crankshaft, there's a gear, which transfers the engine's rotation to an idler gear, which itself transfers it to this gear Paul's removing. That's how the gearbox gets its drive, despite being beneath the engine. With that gone, there's a vicious circlip. Goes to show, if you've got the tools, nothing will get in your way. Back on the other end, that diff pinion sits on a retainer plate that's secured to the arch you can see in the gearbox casing. With that gone, we can take it back out of gear, and as Paul plays around with his rod, it's just got to... <laughs> the lay shaft falls out of the end, and the lay gear can just be pulled out. There are a couple of thrust washers and a bearing that we need to be careful not to lose, and the casing is looking a lot emptier. Now we've removed all the retaining gubbins, the main shaft is now just resting on its bearings, and with a few sharp thuds, the clutch end main bearing falls off. Unfortunately, it's not so simple as just pulling the main shaft out of the casing. The synchronizers that allow you to change gear smoothly have Billions of little ball bearings, roller bearings, springs, and all kinds of stuff that'll explode everywhere if you're not careful. So to avoid ball bearings in Paul's T, we're knocking the shaft from side to side and trying to find the clearance to insert this bearing removal tool. However, Exploded. Right. I knew it would. Never mind. With some more faffing though, the bearing from the timing end comes out, and the main shaft can finally be lifted free. Right. What we're left with in the bottom of the box is reverse gear, the oil pickup strainer, and the gear selectors. We can see them by poking the camera through the hole left by the differential, and they follow the main shaft across the width of the gearbox. At the bottom of this shot is where the selector shaft connects to the selector rod, which goes back to the gear lever in the car. The almost U-shaped object you can see in this shot is the selector fork for first and second gears. The one for third and fourth is hidden in the casing to the right of shot. With finagling of roll pins and quite a bit of hammering, the forks and shaft can come out, and the gearbox is now empty. Strips. Nice. Paul's garage is now littered not just with other A-series rubbish, but also Melody's A-series rubbish. This gives you a closer look at some of these components, and the main shaft in particular. On this section, the straight cut gear to the left is first gear. The fact it's straight cut is why these gearboxes make that characteristic whine in first. Straight cut gears are unheard of in passenger cars today, but they were common in older cars because they're stronger. The downside is the refinement. That's why they're used in race cars. If we skip over the coupling and find our two helical gears, i.e. the ones that are slanted, and they're second and third. So that's one A-series gearbox reduced to a pile of bits I wouldn't know where to start with.
So we've got the gearbox completely stripped down now, we've got all the parts laid out on the table in front of us and I don't know what's wrong with it because I don't know what I'm doing but Paul has been explaining to me generally what's going wrong and uh, we've identified quite a few issues with it so take it away. Okay basically when you change gear, um, you always push the glitch down, um, now when you go to select any gear, in this case second gear, um, this slides across onto these dog teeth here, just there. Now, if the ball ring is worn, it won't slow this gear down quick enough for this to mesh onto that, um, which obviously then cre creates, um, which, which causes your crunch basically. Now, I'll show you the, the um, ball ring that came off at second gear. This is another gear, this is one I'm going to replace it with. But you can see there, there's no gap between the ball ring and the face of the gear there and it's really loose on the cone of the gear. Now to get a brand new, a brand new bulk ring, put it on there, you should be able to see the difference there in the gap between the bulk ring and the face of the gear and that's really quite tight to move. So basically um, this will stop the crunching. Okay we've got the diff out of Ed's gearbox. Um, can't see a great deal wrong with it really. I mean there's no sub substantial play that you get a little bit of play, but you, you need that anyway on both sides. Very little play there. The bearings, they don't... There's a little bit of noise in the bearings, so we'll be replacing both the bearings on the diff. Yeah, you can hear them a little bit, but they're not Yeah, they're not awful, they're not, but, but yeah. you, know, you can hear them a little bit. To, I mean, they will be causing some degree of noise yeah. as you're driving along. So yeah, these will be changed. Um, the red, I, I will strip the diff down um, just to check the diff pin, uh, maybe replace it with an upgraded one. Um, but generally, the diff is, is quite tight. It's, it's not, a, it's not a bad diff at all, to be honest. Yeah. So we'll get that stripped and have a look at it. So yeah. So hopefully that will fix everything because yeah, you know, I don't know whether I've, I won't have played it to everyone in the video in this video, but in the last video I did play. I think the noise that it was making, the one that I sent you. Yeah. Um, and so hopefully we'll fix that noise, um, but yeah, the, the diff doesn't look utterly knackered. Um, so that's a good thing. Cheaper for me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> Which is good. this is the double double roller bearing out the gearbox. Again, it, it's good, but I'd suggest replacing it anyway. Yeah. Um, it'd be silly not to, really. Um, and the same goes for the, the single roller for the input. Um, well, so it'll be all the usual stuff that you just yeah, replace usual stuff. as part of the course. Um, lay shaft, not drastically worn, but there are some marks on it, so that'll be replaced as well, along with the bearings to go with it. It's just stuff you do as a matter of course while the gearbox is apart, really, yeah. uh, to save any, any problems later on. Cool. So, there you go. There is a stripped-down A-Series gearbox. I mean, it's not the most um, you know insightful you know, rundown of it that, that I could have possibly have given you, but we just wanted to get it apart and see what was wrong with it. Um, so it's absolutely not educational, just for entertainment purposes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, hopefully in the next one, don't know whether it'll be on my channel or Paul's or whatever, um, we'll be rebuilding the gearbox. By that point, we'll have a nice clean gearbox casing, and then it can go back on the engine and then go back in the car and hopefully... No more crossed, noises and no more No crunching. more noises and no more crunching, which I've had since I bought the car. So. On that note, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, then please do click like and subscribe to TwinCam as well. I'm forever indebted to my wonderful Patreon supporters, so if you'd like to support me that way, then please do follow the link in the description. Of course, Paul has a channel, link in the description, all that kind of stuff, and I'll have more videos coming along soon.